We're now going to see whether the evolutionary, evolutionary way of looking at the world gives us any special insight into mental disorders. And at the outset, I want to acknowledge that there are some special difficulties in explaining mental disorders. I'm going to offer a null hypothesis, then discuss how evolution might enter that kind of picture. We'll take a look at mental disorders as byproducts of defense systems and as diseases of homeostasis and, mis and, mis and mismatch. The first point to make is that mental disorders are almost all multi-causal. Most of them, most of the time, have several to many causes, and that means that any hypothesis for why a mental disorder exists uh, is not going to be mutually exclusive. We're going to have to entertain several hypotheses at the same time. Many mental disorders do not have credible equivalents in model systems, and that means that experimental approaches are out of reach. We do not really have a credible model system for schizophrenia or autism or something like that. So claims in this area of biomedical science need to be treated with particular skepticism and agnostic patience is especially needed. Here is a null hypothesis. Any process that is influenced by several factors, each of which can vary, will be expressed as a broad range of phenotypes. Those at the center of the range will be more frequent and will be the ones on which natural selection acts most strongly. Those at the extremes will be rare and will not be strongly selected. Mental disorders represent abnormal cognition and behavior that occur at low frequency. If they represent the extremes of a range whose center is normal, then normal cognition and behavior are things that are selected and mental disorders do not need any special evolutionary explanation. They are seen here as the unavoidable byproducts of trade-offs that are expressed at the population level, not within an individual, but across the distribution of phenotypes found in a population. That picture looks somewhat like this. We have functional behavior at the center of the distribution of phenotypes, and mental disorders are seen as the rare extremes. Now, how might evolution enter that kind of picture? When evolution produces a novel aspect of cognition or behavior, it usually does so by modifying some existing process. This is normally how evolution works. If we combine that with the previous figure, then we expect mental disorders to be associated with underlying functions that evolve for other reasons and are normally expressed close to the center of that trait distribution. Their correlations with other traits could be arbitrary reflections of some historical process. They could also belong to several disease categories, including monogenic disorders and catastrophic environmental insults, as well as the ones we discuss next as vulnerabilities of defense systems. So, how might mental disorders be vulnerabilities of defense systems? Anxieties, phobias, and some forms of obsessive compulsive disorders are exaggerated behavioral defenses. Anxieties and phobias are excessive expressions of behavioral defenses that normally avoid dangerous environments. Germophobia and excessive hygiene are a form of obsessive compulsive disorder that exaggerates behavioral avoidance of pathogens. Hoarding behavior may now represent inappropriate and excessive expression of what was once normal foraging behavior. How might mental disorders be diseases of homeostasis and mismatch? Well, such diseases, diseases of homeostasis and mismatch, occur in systems that are designed to be adjustable with set points that define the states that the system is designed to maintain. Such systems are vulnerable to dysregulation because disrupting the set points produces extremes of expression. 
Behavioral homeostatic systems use internal mechanisms of reward and punishment whose set points can be disrupted by exposure to novel substances. One example may be drug addiction, which is going to be discussed next. So to summarize, mental disorders are hard, hard to explain because they have multiple causation and because credible model organisms are not available for experiments. A simple null hypothesis is that some mental disorders represent the rare tales of distributions of cognition and behavior whose centers are normal and selected. Mental disorders can also result from mere rare monogenic mutations. They can be byproducts of defense systems and they can be diseases of homeostasis and mismatch.